Hi, my name is Mark and I'm living in a 1988 Westphalia 2.1. And Westphalia's name is Ragnar the Red Westie. I chose a Westphalia over other camper vans due to I just really like the overall aesthetic and the cool factor. Plus, it's a good investment. Prices either stabilize or go up. thing I did after I slept up here is I bought a memory foam mattress and for any of you van lifers get this first don't worry about your transmission you need to sleep well to work on that transmission so definitely at least a two inch topper storage well I find up here is a great, great book bookshelf um, I, I basically make storage out of everything has to have a purpose so this thing it holds things so they don't slide around and I've made a lot of storage. Under here, I keep, you know, a heater when I can plug in. I mean, it's not great for storage, but it's not bad. And if I could, I would convert it to a pop top, or sorry, into a high top, because then you can get a lot more storage, permanent storage up top, and sanding room all the time. So I installed a lithium, lithium battery. It's only a 50 amp. So yeah, have the inverter for plugging in my electronics and whatnot. And underneath here is a 50 amp lith lithium ion battery, which is expensive, but you get double the lifetime, double the amount of time to, of use. And with the lithium, you get full use of that 50 amps. The battery is connected into a, it's called a red arc. That charges the battery. It gives it a nice clean charge. And also there's a hookup for solar. So when I put solar in, all I have to do is connect the wires to that charger and that charger will recognize when I'm running off a of solar as opposed to when it's charging from the batteries. I charge my phone, charge my laptop, it's pretty much. So if I have to do uh, essay and I want to park in the bush, I just plug in my thing and do my stuff. Lighting, I just installed this simple uh, USB charge LED strip. So the van when I got it, inside, it's pretty much how it, how it is, really good condition. Outside, I changed the tires, I put bigger tires, different rims, I painted the black strip. Why do I live in a van? Back in Calgary, which is full of amazing bike paths. Throughout the summer, I basically would ride at least two hours a day. I'd go from where I was staying into the core, have a coffee, visit, go back, two hour. But I found that on my way back, a lot of times I felt like I wanted to kind of just sit, be, be quiet, rest, not really have to talk to anyone. And you can't do that at a coffee shop. And you can't do that at a place where you're living with people. So in my head, I'm like, ah, oh, I should have, it would be so nice to have a van like I wanted years ago. And that thought stuck in my head. It gives me the freedom to, to be spontaneous with where I want to go, when I want to stop, you know what vista I, I, I want to look at and it also suits my my love of I mean we all love to travel but I love visiting people say to a friend yeah I'll drive over and I don't have to worry about where I'm gonna stay and I'm, I, I have my space my stuff so it's a vagabond type living so it comes with its challenges but specific to this region condensation so you're, it's always kind of damp Luckily I have this heater, which I can plug into my friends. If I'm staying in a place with power, I can kind of dry it out. That's a challenge. If you don't like being stuck in small spaces, that's a challenge. Um, it can be a bit cold. Another challenge is the finance. You have to be prepared to, just today a little issue went. And, and anytime something like that happens, you don't know if it's a $30 nothing or five thousand dollar fix so you have to be prepared for all of, all of a sudden having to pay some money right? and it's worked out I haven't paid rent for eight months that being said when you pay rent mentally you're kind of prepared for that lump every whereas you get used to not thinking oh I have to pay six hundred dollars or eight hundred dollars but all of a sudden you'll have to pay two thousand dollars so you have to it, you have to be fluid in your thinking and and fluid in anticipation. One of the things that, that has allowed me to live my lifestyle is I got 
a trade when I was young, 18. I can paint professionally, I can paint someone's house inside or out, wherever I go. And that's, that's enabled me to live down in Seattle. So I was in Seattle for the first four months in this, which is just across the bay there. It's kind of cool. So I'm very lucky that I can make good money wherever I go if I want to. So that definitely helps. But what I find for me that has nothing to do with, with finance is the willingness to, to extend myself as a service as being involved in something. So wherever I go, I try and get involved in volunteering with something. But through that process, you open up opportunities. And I, I have two places where I stay. One of them through, I painted it, I painted this huge house. And it was empty, they're selling it. I, I just felt, hey, I'm gonna talk to the homeowners. They're nice people. And I offered my service of being on their land as a caretaker and I would sleep in my van and if we could do a deal and they came back said yes so when I need to I have a huge house on three acres of land right on the water so right now I'm, I'm kind of cheating I sleep in this but I don't need to be cooking I can do laundry so but that's through the spirit of, of reaching out and creating my own opportunities and that's what this is to me you're creating your an opportunity for whatever like the road the highway is like the symbol of opportunity and it's up to you what roads you go down i would recommend this lifestyle to anyone with a yearning for for something different exciting and challenging and a lot of people will a lot of people will approach me or in discussions with, with me about what I'm doing, there's usually a two-sided response. One is, oh, that's so awesome. I wish I could do it, but oh, I don't know, I can't. So you can, and if you do, you will. And all it takes is, is turning on the van, turning on your desire and following it. Um, I wouldn't recommend it to people who would have to go into debt. If you have to go into debt, maybe get a like a, a cheaper Dodge or Ford, and, and one that you can kind of get into the lifestyle, but you're not having to worry about big expense and big costs. These West failures are big costs because the market will pay. But I would recommend it to anyone, even just part time. So somebody that's kind of like maybe watched a couple of these videos or is sort of getting interested into this lifestyle, what would you recommend to them or what kind of advice would you give to that person? First, watch all these videos that, that Forrest makes. They're great. Um, second, find blogs about people living this who are giving daily feedback of their experiences. And learn about a vehicle, right? Learn about if you're going to buy a vehicle and you don't know about vehicles, it, it, you're, you're putting yourself at risk. Not that people are out, out there to rip you off, or, but sometimes people don't know. Um, so definitely learn about a vehicle. If you've, once you've chosen a type of vehicle or van you want, before you make a decision, learn about the specifics of that. Because each vehicle has their own awesomeness and not so awesomeness. Right? For instance, the Westies, the, the fuel lines and the cooling system are <laughs> not so awesome. So you need to make sure that any Westphalia you buy either has the fuel lines changed or you have the money to do the fuel lines right away. Because that's a. If you don't do it, your van could burn. Personal philosophy on life. Wow. I like to sum up my philosophy kind of piggybacking. A Greek philosopher and that is an unexamined life is not worth living the true revolution isn't out there it's in here and if you can overcome your own self and learn to consciously move through the world you can you can do anything and that translates into this if something goes wrong you just you roll with it you you know and if you don't examine the van before you buy it, trouble could ensue. Knowledge of oneself, getting to know your mind, your thoughts, how you 
interact with the world. And uh, where can people follow your journey if they want to find out more? I have the van has his own web or um, Instagram. It's called Ragnar dot the dot red dot westy. Ragnar the red westy. Instagram.